Over the last 20 years, despite more technology, more education, and more than 40 new treatment options, the average A1C for a person with type 2 diabetes has not changed. In fact, the number of patients with an A1C over 9% has increased from 12.6% to 15.5%. Achievement of individualized targets has declined from 70% to 64%. The root of this problem is therapeutic inertia. What is therapeutic inertia? Therapeutic inertia fundamentally is the need to either intensify or de-intensify therapy for individuals that are not at goal. And the reality is that that doesn't happen as often as it should. And that's a large part the reason why A1C has not changed or blood pressure or cholesterol values over the last decade. And there are a number of reasons for therapeutic inertia. These could be patient level barriers, healthcare professional level barriers, or system level barriers. So we need a multi pronged response uh, to try and overcome the reasons. It's not going to be one reason. And the, the key aspect is that we need to get these people to target as early as possible so that we're not having these patients in a long term hypoglycemic range, uh, which will hopefully reduce their complications in terms of my microvascular and microvascular complications in the longer term. Why is overcoming therapeutic inertia important? In terms of therapeutic inertia, we have uh, had studies going for 10 to 15 years and we have systematic reviews of therapeutic inertia of how prevalent it is and we're waiting anything from two to seven years when we add either second, third or insulin. Diabetes can be thought of as a very complex and complicated disease. It doesn't have to be. We have tools and resources available to help both practitioners and patients achieve their goals and by achieving their goals live very full and productive long lives. It's not just about a guideline. It's not just about a target blood sugar or a target blood pressure, but it's that entire patient before you. And what can you do to partner with them and empower them to live a healthier life. What is the American Diabetes Association doing to address therapeutic inertia? We have three pillars. The first is research, understanding the best practices, what works, what gets us to be able to overcome thera therapeutic inertia. The second important piece is education and awareness. How do we spread those concepts both to patients uh, people living with diabetes and to our clinical and healthcare delivery system. So our initiative is engaging in collaborative barrier busting. Uh, and our main focus is forming alliances with other groups and professional organizations across the entire healthcare spectrum. And really looking at systems level barriers, evaluating each one and trying to address them as best as possible. And then lastly, looking at innovative decision support tools that are built right into the workflow to make it a lot easier to help overcome therapeutic inertia. What steps can you take to provide better care for your patients? Try to schedule an appointment specifically um, tailored to the management of diabetes. That is the only thing that you're gonna discuss in that appointment. At every visit, ask patients about their barriers to diabetes management. Things such as depression, food insecurity, access to transportation can all be significant challenges for the patient. Work with each individual patient to develop a personalized diabetes care plan. Determine the right A1C target, the best time frame to reach that goal, and then make sure you're incorporating patient preferences into the overarching patient plan. Act rapidly. Aim to get patients to their A1C goal within the first six months. Schedule follow-up visits based on their starting A1C. For those patients with an A1C of 9% or greater, see those patients every six to eight weeks. For those who have 7% to 8.9% starting A1C, every two to three months would be great. And for those patients who are at or below 7%, those patients can be seen every three to six months. 
It's really important to include diabetes education and support classes into the management of diabetes. And even more important than that is following up with them. It's not just a one and done deal. Patients need to be uh, reinvested in education. For more information and for practical tools and strategies you can use right now to break through inertia in diabetes care, visit therapeuticinertia.diabetes.org.